So in this video, what we're going to discuss, like I said in my last video, uh, we're going to touch on Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, uh, in the beginning, the first nine verses are directed to men. It's a mother giving advice, basically, to her son. And talking about things to avoid in life. And then the latter part talks about the type of woman, from 10 all the way down to 31. Basically talks about the type of woman that would be beneficial for, I guess, what people refer to as a high-value man, right? So if you're looking for a husband who can go out there and get resources, if you're looking for a husband who can as they say, bring home the bacon, and who is out there uh, being everything that he can be, well, for a woman, these are the qualities that the Bible says are of benefit. And so it starts off here, it says the words of Lemuel. Lemuel, of course, was a king back in biblical times. And it says here that there was a, an oracle or a revelation that was given basically um, that his mother taught him. And it's ironic because if you watch a lot of red pill uh, information if you listen to a lot of like the kevin samuels or um you know coach greg adams a lot of these different content creators uh, that t typically talk about women and how to avoid the pitfalls of dealing with today's modern day women they always say don't take advice like, as you're very man don't take advice from women but then they always point to Proverbs 31 in some way, shape, or form in one of their videos, and the very first verse, the whole entirety of the verse is given to uh, given to the king by a woman. Anyway, and it says, it says, What should I say, my son? What son of my womb? It says, What son of my vows? Don't spend your energy on women or your efforts on those who destroy kings. And that is very true. When you look back into history, right? You look at the Bill Clintons of the world who he destroyed his career over what? Over a woman, right? A, one who would be in essence like a high ranking individual or who would be a king. And you can often look back and you look at the Harvey Weinsteins um, of history, right? And how do they get their, their uh, lives destroyed? They give their energy to women. Of course, the Bible warned about not doing that. It says, it is not for kings, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, right? And wine is given for different purposes, right? So don't be a drunkard is basically what she's saying. Don't give yourself over to a lot of wine. Uh, be different than a lot of the other ones. And it says, this is, or for rulers, it says, and it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire beer. Otherwise, they will drink uh, and it says, and forget what is decreed and pervert justice for all the oppressed, right? And so individuals who typically give themselves over to a lot of wine become belligerent. Their ability to uh, think and to judge properly becomes impaired because they're, they're impaired by strong drink. And of course, you know, you gain weight, right? You have beer bellies. So this is not the route of a high quality man this is not the route if you want to be uh you know certain groups refer to themselves as kings and certain women's refer to themselves as queens and so if you want to be someone who is a king right if you want to be viewed as someone who is of high value well then you don't want to be giving yourself over to strong drink and to wine that causes laziness right so as it goes on to say it says uh give beer to the one who is dying right and we use like in medicine we use like morphine right and so and that was typically what was given uh when jesus was you know up on the cross and he was dying and they took a little pole and they tried to give him some sweet wine and he refused it and they gave it to the other two right because that's typically what they used they used it to uh, stunt the uh you know the sensation to so that the person uh, basically wasn't there they weren't aware of that what was going on and if you want to be someone who is king like if you're looking to be a high value if you're looking to be a high stationed man well then you're not going to be out there worrying about having strong drink you're not going to be out there uh drinking beer you're not going to be out drinking with the guys on the weekends this is not typically what you see um for individuals who are looking to make something of themselves and so it says uh it says let him so that he can forget his poverty right and that's typically what you see right whenever you see uh, 
people who are basically homeless. You see a lot of these homeless men and typically people don't want to give them money. Why? Because they refer to them as, you know, uh, the winos, right? These are the, you know, and for good reason, right? Their, their lives are not where they want them to be. And so to kind of drown out their sorrows, they give themselves over uh, to beer or alcohol, et cetera. And many of them come into the hospital. Like some of the men that I come into the hospital and they're like, I drink a liter of vodka every day. And I'm like, Jesus, man. But their lives reflect it. Their lives reflect, uh, you know, the misery and the depression and the, and the poverty um, that comes along with that lifestyle. And it says, speak up for those who have no voice. For the justice of all who are disposed, speak up, judge righteously, and defend the cause of the oppressed and the needy. And you look out today, if you're someone who is looking to do right by your people, whoever your people may be, whether you're black or Hispanic, or they're just your people within your organization, or people that you're choosing to look out for, or whether it's your family or extended family, obviously it's much easier to do that if you are a high valued individual, if you're a person who is bringing in a lot of resources, you will have your words will carry more weight. And so that's why you see a lot of wicked people are in positions of authority. And as a result, the people suffer. Like, for example, what's going on right now within the globe, where you have all the wrong people who have amassed wealth for themselves. And these people don't judge righteously. And as a result, the people suffer. And so if you're looking to do good, well, then you have to basically work within the system that says, well, you're going to have to be a high valued individual. You're going to have to be someone that brings in resources so that the people don't suffer, so that the people themselves don't suffer, or at the very least, so that your people don't suffer. One of the most important things, and I spoke about this in my last video, when it comes to amassing wealth, family wealth, generational wealth, is having children and what i didn't touch in my previous video was that if you actually click on the word even though this particular version uses the word children when you actually look at the hebrew word for that meaning it actually means son right so you look back and you'll see it all throughout other different verses it says it refers to sons it refers to sons and so the scripture reads, sons are in an inheritance uh, from the Lord. And of course, the Lord is capitalized, and that's referring to the God of the Bible, Yahweh. It says the fruit of the belly is his reward. And that's very true. Having sons within a family, again, sons like the, like the individual referred to in Proverbs 22, a man skilled in his work. When a husband and a wife can get together, which is what you don't see in America, right? You don't see families and communities anymore, right? What do you see? You see manipulation of both the sexes. And this is for a purpose. And so instead of skilled men looking for capable wives and then giving birth to children that are a heritage to them, not to other people, right? The, not to the Jeff Bezos and the Bill Gates and all these other wealthy individuals, right? Instead of your sons going off and your daughters going off and working for these individuals, instead you create families, you create communities of wealth. And instead of having only a few people at the top, now you have what is referred to as the middle class. And of course, this was all done purposefully to destroy families, to destroy communities, so that those at the top can enrich themselves. And it's not uh, the enrichment just for the money, it's for the power, right? The power spoken of right here that is spoken of in verse seven and eight, right? To speak up for those with no voice, for the, just, for the justice of all who are disposed, and speak up and judge righteously and the ability to defend the cause of the oppressed and the needy. And that's, what you, that's typically what you don't see today and so hopefully we'll see more of that from the generations going forward now touching on what proverbs talks about in terms of what it what sort of a woman should a man who is skilled in his work look for and so it goes on to say it says who can find a capable wife she is far more precious than jewels and of course 
this particular word in different definitions reads like gold or that or um, diamonds etc and it's just basically to paint the scarcity of how rare it is to come across what the bible refers to as a capable wife especially in today's day and age for men who are looking to be skilled and it goes on to say um, the heart of her husband trusts in her and that can be very difficult nowadays especially with a lot of women being very promiscuous um, it only fans is something that is very common it's very common for women to be on dating sites and to go from man to man to man and you really can't trust a woman that's like that uh, and it says and he will lack and he will not lack anything good. It says, and she rewards him with good and not evil. And we see quite the opposite today, with eight out of 10 divorces being initiated by women. The divorce rate is north of 50%, and most of those divorces are initiated by women. And so, unfortunately, instead of giving good to their husbands and not evil, we see the opposite taking place where men, typically skilled men, right? You see that mostly with a lot of celebrities, football players, basketball players, musicians, actors, etc. right? These skilled individuals. And unfortunately, they don't pick capable wives for themselves. And as a result, they are rewarded with evil via the divorce court. This is all the days of her life. And this is something that I really did want to touch on because... We often like if you watch like the Kevin Samuels or ex or any of these other individuals who talk about um, that men shouldn't care about your career or, or about um, what she in terms of her skills brings to the table. More often than not, they talk about beauty and youth and fertility. But pay attention to the verses and you let me know <clears throat> if the skilled woman is not something that is talked about in these verses. And it says here, it says, and she selects wool and flax and the works and works with willing hands. She is like a merchant ships. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household. It says, and portions from her for her female servants. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profits are good and her lamp never goes out at night. She extends her hands to the spinning staff and her hand hold the spindle. Her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all in her household are double clothed. She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known at the gates, uh, where he sits among the elders of the land. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she can laugh at a time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the activities of her household and is never idle. Her sons rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women are capable, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord will be praised. Give her the reward of her labor and let her works praise her at the city gates. This doesn't sound like a woman who is not industrious. In today's day and age, many modern women have many women have been pushed out into the workforce. And of course, you hear things uh, like women are strong and capable. And I would say that's fantastic. The Bible agrees with you. Uh, it, nothing in the scriptures here. You heard uh, instances of a woman who does business, a woman who knows how to sew clothing, a woman who prepares her household with proper fitting, with proper clothing to fit what's going on, whether it's summer or whether it's cold outside. 
a woman who knows uh, how to cook. Like it, it talks, it talks in depthly about her generosity towards the poor. A woman who is hardworking, as it says that her light never goes out at night, and she rises early in the morning. This sounds much like what we do hear about of the modern day women who are strong. The problem is, is that they're strong and they're independent. That's the that's the part that they're where that where women today are misled. They're they're misled to believe that they that they should value their independence when the Bible says that they should be seeking men who are skilled skilled men so that they can create families. And this is what the government does not want. The reason being is because then they can tax you, like I talked about in my last video, they can tax the shit out of you and then take all of the money that you've worked for. They can indebt you by having you go to their colleges and pay ridiculous amounts of uh, price for for a college education. And then they can make use of your sons and daughters in a way that doesn't reflect an appreciation for what they can bring to the table in terms of what they can do to a family, like arrows in the hands of a mighty warrior so are children that are born in one's youth. And so instead of you being able to take advantage of having children, we, and most content creators talk about this in-depthly, about women being young, having children young, right? So the Bible agrees with that, where it says that you can take and now raise children in your youth who can then be utilized by you instead of being utilized by other individuals. And of course, this is all part of the narrative of how to control both men and women. Instead of creating strong households that create strong families, that create strong communities, instead they prefer to create strife and division within men and women. And so it's important to keep in mind what the Bible talks about um, in terms of how you, should, how you should walk your life. And if you're a woman who is like this, you won't be in want for a man who is skilled in his labor, a man who is looking to create a family. Other individuals will have that sort of problem if they want to go that route, if they want to believe in the narrative. And of course, as a result, those individuals will suffer. There's nothing wrong in terms of wanting to put in hard work. Many individuals today are lazy. And as a result, they're going to suffer the penalty of what Proverbs 6 talks about. And we'll end here. It says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Poverty will come on you, will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man, a troublemaker and a villain who goes around with a corrupt mouth. But of course, instead, and as a result of being an industrious individual, the Bible says that the hard-working farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. And I'm basically going to leave it there. Uh, put out two videos today. Put out two videos today. Hopefully you enjoyed what the Bible had to say in terms of a uh, capable wife. It is often a scripture, and I should say a chapter, that is misused to kind of downplay the value of women who do want to go out and have a career, who are skilled, who are able to uh, do good for their household, who can go off and do business, buy lands, etc., as talked about um, in the scripture verse here. We're going to leave it there. Appreciate you watching. Take care. God bless.